Y'all know y'all want that fantasy football championship. Let's go. Welcome back, y'all. It's been a few weeks, but we back up in these streets. This episode is for you, Reverend Dr. William Barber. I heard your words and saw farther to the more complex vocabulary that's so necessary to be imparted and injected into the veins of our American language as we continue to languish in anguish in the hyperbole of political duality. Liberal, conservative, donkey versus elephant. These terms simply irrelevant when our collective American intelligence is so disrespected by our incessant ineloquence. I surprise myself in backing this Protestant North Carolinian. His reverendness at minimum gives me pause in trusting anything he has to say. In my opinion, I too often see the word of God used to promote a person's cause at expense of another, a way to prove a person's cons while the other person's house of glass seems covered. But in your interview with Trevor, I saw you grab no stone. I saw no golden throne. I saw a commitment to the fusion of coalitions intent on honoring our true American mission. We, the people of the United States, in order to form a more perfect union, establish justice, ensure domestic tranquility, provide for the common defense, promote general welfare, and secure the blessings of liberty to ourselves and our posterity, do ordain and establish this Constitution of the United States of America. These pillars and values our duty to uphold, yet Reverend Barber is right. We have turned these terms into talking points to be proven, everyone disillusioned because I don't understand how you don't agree with me and you don't understand why I don't agree with you. Our union in ruins from ignorance pollutions. Rightness and wrongness are merely the poles. The rest of the earth lies in between. All the longitudes and latitudes unseen. All the blue, all the green. On our most natural level, we are in a constant state of compromise. Matter neither created nor destroyed at its most basic exercise. We are meant to squabble, we are meant to argue, for the purpose of maintaining our American values. I agree that welfare is a constitutional requirement. Only someone who's never been poor thinks a poor person desires it. For every single person out there trying to scheme the system, there's million more in dire need of assistance. Now, I don't mean to be disrespectful, y'all, but just in case, buckle up if you're in this car. I don't assume that just because Anthony Weiner texts pictures of the penis persuasion or Senator Michael Grimm threatens people and commits tax evasion or Representative John Forte who body slams reporters or, you know, Nixon and those smoking gun tapes that were recorded, that every politician is a lying, conniving, slimy, grimy sack of wasted air and graying hair, hiding sexualities, taxes used on spending sprees of coke and prostitutes, breaking marital decrees, creators of conspiracy who only care for you and me to benefit their political prosperity. Nah, I would never assume any of that. So, I'm done hearing that being poor is just a state of mind, Ben Carson. But come talk to me when my mom and I sat on that empty apartment floor, the times with no lock on the goddamn front door, sleeping with a baseball bat, counting hours till my dad got back, and in comparison to millions of others, I ain't even have it bad like that. So, Reverend Dr. William Barber II, you got me. I'll check out the new Poor People's Campaign, and I hope you all will do the same, because I'm tired of watching lower economic individuals blamed for sucking on the tea when the damn president cares less about your well-being and more about his tweets. Oh, busted ass mother... I can't even get into it with you.